The Google Classroom app for Android and iPhone, iPad is a great way for both teachers and students to stay on top of classroom assignments. By using the mobile application, you also get a couple of bonus features that I'd like to show you here. Now I'm looking at the Android version of Classroom, but it's also available for um, iOS. I would strongly encourage teachers to ask their students to install the Classroom app on their personal devices, as well as to make sure that the app is on um, any Classroom iPads that you might have. We're going to go over a couple of just quick setup things, and then uh, I'll show you some bonus features as well. The first thing you're going to want to do when um, having your students install the app is to suggest that they adjust their notification settings. So I'm going to click on the three lines in the uh, top left corner of the hamburger, and I'm going to scroll all the way down to settings. And we're going to see a couple options here up towards the top. So I'm going to say it says send email notifications and then also device notifications. Now, students don't rely on email as heavily, so I would probably recommend having them disable the email notification. It's up to you. Um, and they're going to get those device push notifications, which are more useful for a student. Now, when you scroll down, you'll actually see those notifications here, and you can adjust them. Students are going to see the comment section and the classes you're enrolled in section. I recommend that they leave most of these on. Um, you might want to turn off the class comment one. That one is pretty noisy. Um, depending on how much you, you uh, use comments. As a teacher, you're also going to have the classes you teach section, and I would recommend turning off the late submissions and resubmission options. Um, you're going to be in classroom. I don't think you really need an email or push notification every time someone submits some work um, or resubmits it. You can adjust these for your own personal preferences uh, as you need. So that's the first thing I would do just real quickly so they don't uh, get overwhelmed with the notifications. Now the layout is very similar to um, you know classroom on the web through the browser but there are a couple of bonus features that I'd like to show you. Now I'm currently signed in as a teacher um, and so I'm going to show you the first feature that you're going to receive. Um, I just had my students submit this uh, assignment here, post a picture of your pet. And they've been submitting those photos. If I click on um, a student I can see the photo that they've uploaded. And the bonus feature that I'm going to receive is the ability to annotate on top of this assignment. So if you've used Google Keep before, you'll be familiar with this. You'll notice I've got some options down here at the bottom, colors and different pen widths. And I can say, um, I can just, again, write right on top of the image. You'll say, happy rabbit, something like that and the student will see that they enjoy when uh, teachers comment on their work like that. So that's a feature that you can only do through the Classroom app. Um, it, you don't have that option on the web. Now it's going to save that as a copy of the original so it doesn't overwrite the student's work. It adds a second um, image in this case with that comment on top of it. Um, so that the ability to edit and annotate is useful. Uh, that works with documents as well. So literally anything a student turns in through Google Classroom, you can click the annotate button and draw right on top of it. If you're doing that with something like a Google document, it's going to create a PDF of the document that you're going to be writing on and then returning to the student. So that's the first bonus feature teachers are primarily going to be using that feature. The second bonus you get, it gets back to the same assignment. Um, anytime you are on the Classroom app, you're going to see um, this paperclip icon. And you're going to be familiar with those. You'll see drive link file. Those are familiar to you. But when you're on the app itself, you will have the opportunity to take a photo or record a video directly from your mobile device. This is extremely helpful if you wanted to do some kind of a scavenger hunt. If you have iPads in your classroom, it really opens up a lot of interesting opportunities because students can take a picture of maybe the, the artwork they're working on, um, the math 
homework that they completed and then submit that right to classroom. You can do it on the web as well, but it's an extra step because you have to take the picture, save it to Google Drive or somewhere, and then post that picture through classroom. So on a mobile device, that's uh, a little bit easier. Now, as a teacher, this feature here is tremendous for um, sub plans, for example. I can just click the record video button, say, hey, students, I'm out today. Um, here's your assignment without having to really do anything. Um, just do it right from uh, my phone, wherever I happen to be. That feature there will be available to both teachers and students uh, through the app. Now, the third and final thing I want to show you um, just helps students um, manage and organize their assignments a little more effectively. Um, I switched uh, accounts. Um, I'm going to click the hamburger again. Now, I'm actually a student in a couple classes here. And so students are going to um, have this option here on their phone. It's called To Do. And it allows them to see at a glance all of the upcoming assignments that they need to complete. Now, this feature is also available on the web. Um, but again, if a student's on the bus riding home, they can quickly jump into the to do section and see uh, what homework they have for that evening. Very easy way for students to keep track of their assignments. That's a quick overview of some of the features of the Google Classroom mobile app. I'd encourage both you and your students to take advantage of it.